every December, the Lego Mine Builders team and the Lego Mine Coders team take a trip to compete in the first Lego League State Championships of Massachusetts. To compete against their, their sort of global counterparts. And that's very important to understand where they fit, that they can be a part of that conversation. But in addition to that, you know, we visit a number of um, institutions and facilities while we're in, in the Massachusetts area, primarily to expose them to experiences that we don't have access to in, in Jamaica. I love the self-assembly lab where um, they had all sorts of compounds and they would assemble each other into different shapes. So this thing will assemble into different shapes. You can see some over there, large scales. Just through random energy, it comes back together. Normally in robotics, you have to program uh, what you've designed, but in this, it's just the material that's moving by itself based on conditions in the environment. So when this goes into water, the white material expands and then it folds into shapes like an octahedron or this one folds into a cube or we have proteins that fold, text that fold. Getting to understand those machines that would build themselves without the need of a program or without much human input. I think I really learned from that in that humans don't have to be in control of our creations all the time. Probably the most memorable moment was learning about the self-assembling figures and just like thinking about how we could use them to protect against natural disasters back home in Jamaica. After the landslide, you due to the amount of energy, you could form a wall. Like say, you're at towns at the bottom of a mountain, use the self-assembling structures so like right before the town, you just they form a wall and divert it. Yeah, so actually I had a... Um My favorite part of the day was visiting CSA Labs where we got to view some cool robots. Like ones that are supposed to act like humans and they have ears and eyes and you know a mouth and everything. From ones that are supposed to help people carry loads and you know like the nuclear disasters and you know swim and fly and everything. My favorite thing was the plane that could change the pitch of the wings to land at a stop instead of having to land on a runway. We also visited a, a new exhibition space called Le Laboratoire Cambridge, where they're talking about and demonstrating how arts and science intersect. And they were playing these weird, calming vocal sounds. And I was just relaxing on the carpet, meditating. And then after that, they give you like a mic headset thing. And whenever you speak into that, you can feel the vibrations that your voice makes with this vibration ball. There's a feeling, at least among students in the States, that somehow you have to do everything. And MIT has really kind of forcefully tried not to do that, but to mm -hmm. focus on you doing one thing really well. It's the idea of passion. When it comes to robotics, I'm mostly interested in the building aspect of it. I used to take apart toys and put them back together in different ways. My favorite subject would probably be math. Math is used everywhere to figure out how much degrees your robot will go first to calculate a proper swing turn, how to create an app, everything needs math. I'm actually a very green person. I wanted there to be less pollution and so on. If I had all the funds and resources that a college like MIT had, I want to create a vertical farm. It's basically a better use of space rather than having flat farmland. I'd invent the world's first fixed pitch quadricopter, which means it's not limited to going up, down, bank left, bank right, forward and back. I think that FLO is trying to prepare us so that we can help the world, you know? And though learning these robot programming languages is cool, when we look at the what the problems are and how we can solve them, I think that's going to help make the world a better place.
Halls of Learning. Empower your life.